Isildur will continue to raise Gondor's dead until he is stopped. Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with another episode of The Shadow of War. All right, and we left off. Uh, I ended up recording an episode, and then when I tried to get it edited, the file was corrupted, and I could no longer use it. So... Unfortunately, I'm going to have to show off a couple things that were not there originally. Because some of the stuff changed right after. <laughs> some of the stuff changed right after I went on hiatus. Now, some of that I will show. But there was a quest that I did in the episode I recorded. And I thought it all went good. And now I can't show it. I'm a little upset. Because that had quite a revelation. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to do a quick purview of all the changes that uh, happened. And uh, just express my sincerest regrets that I could not show you the things that happened. But I could do a quick overview due to the quest uh, log. So let me get to that in a second. Under Iltarial Quests, Grave Walkers. This was the quest we did. Apparently, Isildur, the one who took the One Ring off of Sauron's hands, is still alive as a Nazgul. And he fought using the most vile of means yet, which was an army of whites. Um, those whites are the people who died at Minas Ithil, including Castamere. He's using apparitions, ghosts, essentially, of the people who died at Minas Ithil as an army. It was fucked. And we didn't beat him. We didn't beat him. We just kind of... You know, delayed his uh, fighting with us. But... It was quite a quest to go on that I now have no footage of. No usable footage. And I guess food's ready. <laughs> I had to record this after I tried to edit it, so it's a little late at night, just all that. Um, <laughs> after trying to give a, uh, after trying to give it an edit, it just was unwatchable. It was horrible, and I am so sorry I can't put that out for you guys. To be fair, it was the only mission I ended up doing. So, that's the only thing we missed. Gravewalkers is completely missed due to editing failures. I'm hoping this one doesn't have that problem. But, it had to have been something that happened while I was recording. Uh, and I have no idea why. So, the, the new way that I'm setting up recordings is I'm doing it the day before and then editing after work. Uh, it used to be, like, before work and getting it all scrambled up. Now this feels a little more uh, relaxed a setting, but right now, this was the first problem I've run into, where this sort of thing happens. I don't know what happened. Anyway. Um... <laughs> This was all that we missed. This is a brief summary of what happened. It was just a f out, just flat out fight with the Nazgul and the army of apparition ghosts that uh, we were fighting against, and that's it. That was all it was. 
uh, when it came to gameplay. Because I was so geeked about the changes for the game, I just kept going crazy over them. Which I'll be showing in a second. Uh, this is just quests, common gear. Yeah, that's all the same. Okay. It's all okay. Now, garrison. Instead of the market. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> a little burpy. I have uh, sparkling water as my drink for right now because it's late in the day. Um, the market became the garrison. The garrison is where you house your followers, your unopened chests. Uh, they converted my gold chests. I had opened them in the video. I apologize. Most of that stuff was legendary stuff and stuff I couldn't use, so I deleted them. And some upgrade training orders as well. Now, training orders. That is done a little differently now. And it's actually pretty cool. Um, it's a less of a pain in the ass. So, you used to be, if you didn't have the training orders, you couldn't give it to your Uruks. That all. That's gone. Now, you can spend Mirian, which is the only in-game currency. The only in-game currency you have. You can spend that to then give that to your followers. You see, I got the all of these here. All of those are available now. I have several scrolls that I still have on the back burner. But these are all here as well. All the old scrolls I have, I can still use them. And it won't cost me Marion. But the ones that do cost Marion, as you can see, won't put a dent <laughs> in what I've collected thus far. With how many hours I've done prepping the game and getting stuff done off camera. That's not an issue. I, I'm set for the rest of the game. This does make upgrading the Uruks a lot easier, which is another thing. Apparently, the level cap has been extended to level 80 for both Talion and the Uruks. So, all of this has become useful again. <laughs> because I'm cur I was at the last level cap of 60. Now I'm at 80, and I found that out after I was recording. When I looked at the character screen and realized I'm still accruing XP. When I last left off, it showed max. And it was just a full bar. No going any further. That's gone up. <laughs> so you can even hit higher levels of power than you used to. Now I don't know what that will... Uh, lead to in the area of skills since the skill tree looks essentially the same um, with skill points and all of that considered so I don't know I don't know what that's going to end up doing maybe it's just upping my level to then give that benefit to my Uruks later on, I don't know all I know is that the level cap has been extended like I remember hearing about so I can go further I can go further, and thus my Uruks can go further. I'm not sure if that will carry over with everything else, but that's available. Now, weapons. Weapons and everything else have been changed a little bit. Um, not much in that regard, honestly. Um, all of the bonus set pieces are still the same, but... When you're going to dealing with your, you know, whatever it is, you can change it up with Modify Gear. You can go through the Destroy if you have a copy of it already. Or, if you like the gear set, or you don't like the gear set, but that's the only one you have, the gear bonus, you can re-roll it for gems that you have. Now, I have a number of gems. I can do that. That is pretty cool. The gear matches or exceeds Talion's level. 
at this point, I'm not sure if you can upgrade these even further beyond once you hit the actual new cap of 80. I don't know. We'll find out when we get there. But, of course, until then, I'll be finding out on my own. But, this is rather cool. All I know is that I can absolutely change some of my gear into different different set bonuses that I want. Oh, okay. That's a thing. I wasn't quite sure about that. See, for some of them it looked like it looked like the white gems were just the uh, the only currency you could do, but it looks like looks like you can just re-roll with the, the, each of them have a certain uh, gem that you can re-roll with that's what it looks like for this one it looks like the vitality gems are the ones that are required um, this one does green oh I can't upgrade because the challenge is incomplete right now okay um, which one do I have at full level I don't Okay, I don't have any of the rest of them at full level. Okay, so when it hits the max, that's it. It's done. That's what it looks like to me, anyway. So, okay. So, the armor is a red gem. Or at least thus far. The ring is a white gem. The armor is a red gem. The, uh... Cloak is a... Green gem. What was it? Power, wealth, vitality. So, wealth, vitality, power. Not sure about this. This one's wealth. This one's vitality. And I'm assuming this one is power. Yes, I'm right. Okay. So, it depends on the gems that you have. That's fair. I have a number of power gems. I could re-roll my weapons and armor for quite a while <laughs> before I finally get to a point where I can't do it anymore. I should probably combine these to think of it. I have quite a number extra. Let's deal with that, shall we? There we are. Get that. And now I have a number more for when I get to other levels. Okay, now, with that in mind, just looking at these, oh, some of their uh, effects have been increased as well, I think. Wasn't it just 10% before? Now it's 20%. Huh. Or maybe I'm just losing it. <laughs> it's entirely possible I'm losing it, and I'm just overwhelmed by all the changes that have come up. Now, uh, I still have a number of followers that are just sitting, uh, <laughs> sitting at the bleachers waiting for me to bring them up, and, uh, I don't know. I might just, unless they're interesting, I might just get rid of the common ones and, uh, roll out the epic and legendary ones and see how they do. But that's only if there's a there's an opening that I can throw them into because well I kind of like some of the ones that we have out you know what I mean now the training orders just to show off how the uh, some of these go for uh, applying it from here you can just go to the region you want to use it on we have a number of people here I want to fix up uh, I've already gotten bruised to the max level I can get. Uh, so, the main thing is trying to get these guys up to snuff. I did uh, him as well. Uh, Brawl Master, I think. Okay. I, 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 I'll admit, sometimes I it, there's so many names. <laughs> it's hard to remember all of them. Okay, so... Some of these guys are okay. Some of them are not. Some of them aren't going to benefit from 
or at least they're not going to be able to fully benefit from an up of five levels. Some of them will. It only shows you the ones that will. Those are the ones highlighted in blue. All of the rest of them either won't benefit or aren't on your side. So. Uh, let's do it with one of our people up here. Luga the Marauder. Ups up by five levels. Which makes it a lot easier to get your people up to snuff without having to just risk them in a combat scenario which is very nice and uh apparently a lot of the training orders that'll pop up they they are uh more numerous in the uh chests that you get now rather than you know you're getting less of those you're getting far more of them as you are for items as well uh, haven't really interacted all that much with the chests, mainly because I haven't gotten a lot of them yet. <laughs> I only had the three, and a lot of them weren't really, you know, really, uh, numerous. I had, like, the, I had the two items chests that ended up being worthless, and, well, at least worthless to me, because I've already built up a lot. Uh, the stuff that I got that was legendary was already, uh, <laughs> already stuff that I had, and the gear sets were either exactly the same or stuff I didn't need. So I just tossed most of them. So, the training orders just added on to the pile that I already had, so that was whatever. Now, I can also do it from this screen here to change their levels up and whatnot. Yeah, or Eden is already at uh, 58, so he wouldn't have benefited, as I was saying, as uh, I was showing off the stuff. <laughs> so yeah, all of this is pretty, pretty cool. I can easily build up what the, uh, what the army will need in the future. And, uh, won't have to risk their lives pulling them out and trying to get their level up the old-fashioned way in a uh, single-player game or doing it via uh, assaults that could lead to their deaths. So, at least that way, you can do it a little safer, but, I mean, some people won't find that as fun. <laughs> I understand, but at the same time... Some of these personalities are really interesting and really cool, and I would rather not have them just die off while I'm trying to level them up in the first place to make them more powerful. You know what I mean? I would rather not risk that sort of situation happening. So, yeah. That covers really everything. There was also a change to Castamer on the uh, menu here. Yeah, on the, on the appendices here. And I figure because of what happened in the quest, I should at least read that off for you. So, some of this is stuff we already knew, and the rest of it will be new. Mainly past the first three paragraphs here. One of them's a quote, and then the rest of them's just info about it. Minas Ethel stands not because of its walls, but because of its people. We sit at the edge of a very dark sea, and we hold back the tide. General Castamir is the leader of Minas Ethel's military forces. A proud son of Gondor and a decorated war hero, many see him as the only thing keeping Sauron's overwhelming siege forces at bay. He is a well-respected but demanding leader with a practical and hard-nosed perspective that enables him to find unconventional solutions and take calculated risks to achieve his goals. Castamir came from a military family, following in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. He has a hardened exterior that doesn't falter, but, a f nah, but an affectionate relationship with his daughter Idril, whom he loves above all else. While he appears humorless, a closer look reveals an intelligent man who is deeply preoccupied with the fate of his city 
and is beginning to show the strains of it. Whoopsie doodle. That was the wrong thing. <laughs> that was my thumb being fat in that regard. Uh, I'm trying to hold my drink at the same time. Should be uh, focusing on the controller, shouldn't I? <laughs> Castamere is smart enough to know a hopeless situation when he sees it, yet practical enough to wrest the, what advantages he can from the enemy. As the orc siege lengthened, the strain took its toll. Willing to make any sacrifice for his daughter's safety, Castamere struck a bargain with the Witch King, Idril's safety, in exchange for the city and the Palantir with it. Upon attaining the Palantir, the Witch King killed Castamere and turned Minas Ethil into Minas Morgul, scattering the few human survivors. Even death was not the end of Castamere's fall. He found himself raised as a white by the Nazgul Isildur to challenge Talion once more. And, uh, yeah. That is pretty fucked. Also, uh, I expected uh, Isildur to pop up on here as well, not Free Peoples. Uh, hmm. I guess not. Which King of Anmor, Angmar, <laughs> my fucking nose, is starting to fuck with my ability to speak. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Oh, there he is, Isildur. It was in this moment when all hope had faded that Isildur, son of the king, took up his father's sword. Sauron, the enemy of the free peoples of Middle-earth, was defeated. The ring passed to Isildur, who had this one chance to destroy evil forever. But the hearts of men are easily corrupted, and the ring of power has a will of its own. It betrayed Isildur to his death. Isildur did what no one thought possible, defeat Sauron at the height of his power. But this great triumph led Isildur to become perhaps the One Ring's greatest victim. A founding king of Gondor, Isildur was among the host that battled Mordor's armies in the last alliance of men and elves. I did it in the wrong order. <laughs> I was doing it in the way the movie said it. <laughs> My brain is hardwired that way. Though Sauron slew Isildur's father, El en <laughs> Elendil, <laughs> sorry, I can't talk apparently, Isildur cut the One Ring from Sauron's hand, defeating the Dark Lord and winning the day for men and elves. Isildur chose to keep the One Ring. He resisted wearing it for some time, though. Like so many others, he finally succumbed and placed the ring on his finger. He saw himself as the new Lord of the Rings, but quickly learned that the ring has only one master, and he does not share power. The Eye of Sauron fell upon Isildur, and he was pursued relentlessly by the Dark Lord's forces. Orcs ambushed the king's traveling party as it crossed the Anduin River, and in the ensuing chase, Isildur was killed. The ring flew from his finger and was lost in the Anduin, only to be found years later by the creature now known as Gollum. Isildur's body was retrieved and taken to Barad-dûr. While Sauron had not yet returned to physical form, Existing in a spectral half-life, he placed a ring of power on Isildur's finger. This returned him to life, but enslaved him and made him one of the nine. Now, this seems to be a deviation from the story that we know, but then again, we've been having a lot of deviations from the story we know, quote-unquote, lately in this game. So, I'm assuming that... Taken into context, this was, you know, an attempt to just increase his uh, ranks of Nazgul even further. Uh, because, uh, for one reason or another, who knows. Uh, so, that makes sense. It seems, personally, uh, from a writer standpoint, it feels slightly like a semi-cheap twist. You understand? Um, that was quite a revelation to come on to uh, when I first recorded it. 
but at the same time, uh, afterwards, when I was mulling it over in my head, it seemed a little cheap. Uh, simply because it's bringing in a name that we know to be like, oh, look at him, he's, he's part of this too now. And, yeah, like I said, it just seems a little cheap to try and give a nod to the original, uh, the original story that brought about this game, but it, mm. it's like they didn't have enough to already work with and they just kind of pulled this out of, like, nowhere. But that, that's me as a writer, and, and a writer standpoint, thinking. Um, I mean, it works. It works enough. Uh, just as, like, a uh, nod to the original story, but at the same time, it feels cheap. It does, really. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to call it lazy, because it does take some... It does take some ability to write it up especially with this uh, additional part to it as well um, it does take a bit of work to write it up and then make it sound believable but eh, yeah it just kind of leaves a weird taste in my mouth or there could be the smoke <laughs> from uh, all the wildfires in my area Ah, oh, jeez. It's, it's really bad, guys. <laughs> it's really bad. Anyway, now I've shown everything. I hope this makes up for all of the shenanigans. <laughs> because I, I'm annoyed with myself that I didn't check on that before I tried to edit it. I'm hoping this one makes it through. So, anyway... I think I can end the episode here for right now. Uh, just wanted to show off. My Uruks will be very strong by the next episode. <laughs> and uh, I will have done quite a bit of work to uh, make sure all of my people are up to snuff. So people who are going after me in, uh, in pit fights and all of that. Be wary. Because I'm bulking up. <laughs> I didn't have all that time before. I didn't have all that ability to before. Now I do. <laughs> Alright. So, thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. Click the like button if you like this particular video. Don't know why, it just ended up being mainly me talking about all the new shit. <laughs> and share in comments so we can bring more people into the... <laughs> I can't fucking talk. That's a smoke affecting my brain. And share in comments so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together, and I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one the only Stray Cat playing games and, well, really showing off shit and kind of critiquing the writing a little bit. The game has its good points, and then there's none that are... There's ones that are just not as great <laughs> for you. <laughs>